Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever the time you watch this video. As you do, we hope and pray that the worship service uh, blesses you in your heart, mind, and soul, and in the fellowship with others. If you're watching yourself, may it encourage you and strengthen you. If you're watching with others, may it uplift you and one another as we praise the Lord, as the Lord comes to us with the good news and the gospel. Jesus Christ has risen. He triumphs over sin, grave, and hell, and death, and He lives as King over all. Even though the things happen in this world, Jesus still rules and reigns. May this promise, may this hope comfort you this day. Our theme is going to be, Peace Comes with Trusting Jesus. We'll continue now with our first hymn, He's Risen, He's Risen. It'll be in your hymnal, Lutheran Service Book, Hymn 480, we'll be singing the first five verses. He's risen, He's risen, Christ Jesus the Lord. He opened us free. of heaven in jubilant song and earth, sea, and mountain their praises grow long the fall was triumphant when on Calvary the Lord of creation was nailed to the tree in Satan's domain did the host shout and cheer, for Jesus was slain, whom the evil ones fear. But short was their triumph, the Savior arose, and death, hell, and Satan, he vanquished his foes. The conquering Lord lifts his banner on high. He lives, yes, he lives, and will never more die. Oh, where is your sting death? We fear you no more. Christ rose now and opened his fair Eden sore. For all our transgressions his blood does atone. Redeemed and forgiven we now are his own. Then sing your hosannas and raise your glad voice. Proclaim the blessed tidings that all may rejoice. Lord, honor and praise to the Lamb that was slain. With Father and Spirit he ever shall reign. We begin today's service calling on the name of the Lord our God. We invoke His name and His presence is with us. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our opening sentences will not be on the screen for this day. We're working out some snafus with our, with our electronic equipment. So Laura, Jason, and I will be responding responsibly for you. Alleluia. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death, Death no, no longer has dominion over him. Alleluia! Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Alleluia! Alleluia! Alleluia. We continue now with confession and absolution. Lord, 
You were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You covered all their sin. So now, show us today your steadfast love, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. We now then practice in heart, mind, and with our lips, confessing our sins to, unto God, our gracious Lord. We confess. Almighty, Almighty God, God, in humility, humility and, and with, with repentant, repentant hearts, we come, we come before you with shame and regret. We, we admit, admit and confess our sinfulness. We have not lived up to our calling as your peaceable people. We have not done the good you demand and have not been the people you would have us to be. We do repent and are truly sorry for our sins in thought, word, and deed. Have mercy on us, merciful Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son. Forgive us all that needs your forgiving grace, and with the power of your Holy Spirit, direct us to serve you faithfully all our days through Jesus Christ, our Lord. God has promised his merciful forgiveness to those who repent of their sins and who turn to him in confession and contrition. He says he will revive them and speak peace to his people. Therefore, in the stead and by his command, I proclaim to you today great news. God says, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go up. God keep you in his grace by the Holy Spirit and that leads you in the ways of peace and in joy and in finally bringing you to live with him forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. We pray. The words will be on the screen instead of just me praying. We will all pray together after I introduce us with the first sentence. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God, through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue now with our first lesson being read by Jason. First lesson today is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 5. Chapter 5, verses 29 through 42. Peter and the other apostles replied, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus from the dead, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior that he might give repentance and forgiveness of sins to Israel. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were furious and wanted to put them to death. But a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law who was honored by all the people, stood up in the Sanhedrin and ordered that the men be put outside for a little while. Then he addressed them. Men of Israel, consider carefully what you intend to do to these men. Some time ago, Theodos appeared, claiming to be somebody, and about 400 men rallied to him. He was killed, and all his followers were dispersed, and it came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean, appeared in the days of the census and led a band of people in revolt. He too was killed, and all his followers were scattered. Therefore, in the present case, I advise you, leave these men alone. 
let them go. For if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. But if it, but if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. His speech persuaded them. They called the apostles in and, them, and had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. The apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. Day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Christ. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. We continue now with the reading of our psalm for today, Psalm 148. We're going to read responsibly. It will be all of us, Jason, Laura, me, and you as you read along on the screen, as well as men and women responses. We'll respond accordingly. Psalm 148. We continue with all of us starting the psalm together. We read. Praise, Praise the, the Lord. Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord from, from the heavens. heavens. Praise, Praise Him in the heights. Praise Him, all His angels. <clears throat> Praise Him, all His hosts. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you shining stars. Praise Him, you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let, Let them praise the name of the Lord, for, for He commanded and they were created. And he established them forever and ever. He gave a decree, and it shall not pass away. Men, praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all the deeps, fire and hail, snow and mist, stormy wind fulfilling his word. Women, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, beasts and all livestock, creeping things and flying birds. Men, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and maidens together, old men and children, everyone. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. He has, he has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his saints, for the, for the people of Israel who are near to him. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our epistle lesson is read by Laura. The epistle lesson comes from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. 1 Peter 1, 3 through 9. Praise to God for a living hope. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. We continue now with our Verse for the day, Jesus' name above all names. We'll be singing the first verse and the third verse on the screen. Let's see. 
Son, the Prince of Peace, who by His Spirit comes to live in us, Master and Friend. Holy Gospel today is taken from the book of John, chapter 20. John chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. Jesus appears to his disciples. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Jesus appears to Thomas. Now Thomas called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I seal the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus did many other miraculous signs and in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you o Christ. Christ. We continue now with our hymn of the day. Our hymn of the day is When Peace Like a River, Lutheran Service Book 763, all four verses. my 
my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. And Lord, is the day when our faith shall be sucked. The clouds be rolled back like a scroll. The trumpet shall sound and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. With my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, our ever-risen, our ever-present Jesus Christ, triumphant King from the grave, who reigns on high this day and forever. Amen. I want to start at the end of our reading because it's the basis for everything that comes before it. Everything that has happened, everything that we have seen, everything we have heard, everything that we may have watched about the story of Jesus Christ has its basis in the words that John writes. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples which are not recorded in this book. But these have been written that you may believe Jesus is the Christ the Son of God, and that by believing, you will have life in His name. Peace comes with trusting. Peace is not something that we can generate. We can generate human peace, but not the peace that passes all understanding. That comes from God. I want to talk to you about the song we just sang, It Is Well With My Soul. Horatio G. Spafford wrote these lyrics. I don't know if you have heard about the story behind the song, but hear them now. Horatio wrote these words back near the end of 1873. He had just heard about the death of four of his daughters, when the boat that they were traveling in, in with their mother hit another seal, a seagoing vessel, and it crashed into it and sunk, and 223 people died. There was only 47 survivors. One of them was Horatio's wife. On the way over from the America to over Europe in his boat, the sea captain pulled him over on the way over and said to him, right now, we're passing over the spot where that, that sea vessel sunk and where your daughters died. And this is what Horatio said to himself. These words, quote, It is well. The will of God be done. This central thought would later motivate him to write today's hymn, It is well with my soul. I don't know what you think or know or understand or have experienced about peace. I don't know if you know what it does or where it comes from or how it works. But I do know this. In today's reading, we hear Jesus say it and give it to his disciples. He did it when he had first appeared to them. He said, Peace be with you. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and he stood among them and he said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And then the disciples were overjoyed when they saw 
it is the Lord. Again. Then Jesus says again, peace be with you. As the Father sent me, I'm sending you. And with that, he breathed on them. <sighs> Racha, spirit, wind. Peace be with you. If you forgive somebody their sin, I forgive them. If you hold someone's sin against them, I hold it against them. In John's record of Jesus' first appearance to his disciples, it seems like the disciples are feeling anything but peace. They don't know what it is. They're in the upper room, they're together behind closed doors, and then it happens. Somewhere, at some time, Jesus is just there. He's standing among them, and however long it took, however it happened, there they are looking at him, and he is looking back at them, and they think to themselves all those questions, and so Jesus does something. He just goes, and I don't know how long it took, but you know they gathered around him, and then it come to the realization, it's Jesus, it's him. Why did Jesus do this? Put yourself in their shoes. You saw him crucified. You saw him die. And you had heard the story that he was alive. And there you are in the upper room with others. You're, it's locked room. And you're there. And then he just appears. So he does something. He goes, look, look. And it says they were overjoyed. They believed. But Thomas wasn't there. For whatever reason, Jesus just goes. After Jesus leaves, Thomas shows up. And can you imagine being either the disciples or now Thomas? It, I, let's, let's be honest here. If you and I were Thomas and we walked into that room and everyone says, He's alive! He's alive! We saw him. We saw his hands. We saw his side. And then that happens. Thomas goes, Nah. Nope, no way. Nope, I'm not going to believe. He draws a line unless I touch him. He had to do something more. He can't just see Jesus' hands or his side. He says, unless I put my hands in his hand scars and in his side, I'm not going to believe. I don't know what it was like back then, but I don't know what happened for the next seven days but can you imagine being in the same room or the same area? Did they whisper? Did like, did they, like, did they try to hold themselves back? Like, man, Thomas doesn't get it. He, I wish he would have been here. And does Thomas participating in their conversations? What? I don't know. But I don't know if there was a whole lot of peace there, at least with Thomas, around Thomas. But if they were away from him, maybe they got to say, wow, Jesus is alive and Oh, I feel sorry for Thomas, but man, he's alive. And it took seven days of all of this to happen. And then Jesus appears again. And he did the same thing. Peace be with you. And he just calls out Thomas. Here, look. Go ahead, touch. Go ahead, feel. Go ahead. And Thomas didn't even have to touch him. He just goes, Lord, Savior. Jesus says, you, you believe because you see, but blessed are those who haven't seen me, but will believe. He's talking about you and me. He's talking about you and me. Blessed are people who have heard that I'm alive and I'm risen and I reign on high. Despite what goes on in your life and in your world. Despite everything that outside this world. There's nothing in this world that can do what Jesus does. Nobody, no thing can do that. In fact, people and things actually can take away or attack our faith. But Jesus says, I give you peace like the world doesn't give you. I don't give to you like the world does. I don't exactly know exactly what he means by that, but I do know this. He gives a peace that passes all understanding. He gives a peace that can look 
death, persecution, trials, tribulations, struggles, and temptations, and in the end, still can say and still can believe it's well. It is well in my soul. My soul is okay. Now, years in the past, I've always talked about this peace, but I want to attach this peace to this love that is unending, this joy that cannot be snuffed out, because all of it is what Jesus has and is and gives. Not the governor, not the president, not a vaccination, not a movement to protest. And I, I've been listening, I've been watching, and I'm seeing people act and behave, and I, and I don't like what I'm seeing on the commercials and all of that. But the tr simple truth is, there's people creating chaos and people being, being um, unsettled and, and being unnerved by it themselves and including others. And all of it, it will not give you peace, right? If you just keep listening to it and you don't protect yourself from it, it can consume you. It can distract you and can take away from you a peace that has no limit. A peace that passes all understanding, a love that can never be snuffed out, a hope that will always satisfy. You can't get it just anywhere. Jesus says, Peace be with you. Jesus is peace. Himself, His presence, alive. This past week, Laura and I did a devotion in the Lutheran Hour Ministry and it asked this question. So how do you think you will react when on the last day you see Jesus face to face? Laura and I answered that, and, and I, I was just, I can't remember her answer, but I remember my answer, because I remember, I think it's similar. It was seeing Jesus looking him in the eye, and him looking right back at me, and smiling. Just smiling at me. And that, that fills my heart. That fills my mind. That Jesus, who I've talked about, preached about, shared about, witnessed about, and told people about, that he is there, and he's looking at me, and he's smiling at me, and I'm smiling back at him. That's what I look forward to. No human peace can give you that. No human power, strength, conviction energy, effort can give you a peace and a hope and a love like that. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. He's the one that rose from the grave. He's the one that took the keys of hell away from Satan. He's the one that rules and reigns on high. Yes, this world around us and the world that within us that we face it is full of chaos. It is full of trial and tribulation and temptation. And yet through it all, our reading says, all of this, everything that we go through, everything that we face, it's now turned into something good because it's going to prove your faith genuine and real. And you will receive the, the goal of your salvation, which is eternal life. That, that eternal life is a gift God gives to you. Not as the world gives. You can't earn it. He gives it. So, what shall we say? What can we say? What ought we say? There's nothing in this world, nor height, nor depth, no power, or principality, no nakedness, danger, sword, or pestilence, or COVID-19 that can ever separate you from the love of God in Christ. This is what gives peace that passes all understanding. So, whether you, you contract this virus or not, whether you 
survive it or not. Whether you stand on this earth or you go to your grave, I tell you this, you can count on these words, that Jesus will always give you what's needed in your heart. So you can say, beyond a shadow of a doubt, it is well with my soul. That's what Jesus gives today and always. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sea billows roll, you and I can say, it is well with my soul. This is the peace that Jesus gives that passes all understanding. Hold on to it. Receive it. Live with it today. Jesus is triumphant. He's risen from the grave. Alleluia. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Guard and keep our faith in Jesus Christ. Today, through this pandemic situation, COVID-19, and past and beyond. Amen. We continue now with the words this week to our Nicene Creed as found on the screen. We confess together. I believe, I believe in, in one God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue with our prayers of the church. We pray. We now pray for the whole people of God in Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray. Lord, we pray that you would give us, the Christian church, a peace that you give, that you would help us dwell on it, and that the Spirit of God, you, Holy Spirit, would work through it, work through us, to share, to show, and give the great mercy you have given to the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and grant us your peace. Lord, we pray for the nations of the world and for the men and women entrusted with the leadership. We pray for true and lasting tranquility to be known around the globe, Lord, through legislation, through actions, through decisions that are made. Lord, help them lead and make godly decisions. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer and grant, grant us your peace. Lord, we pray for a good shepherd and congregations in the Alexandria area and congregations throughout the United States. 
We pray, Lord, that you would help us individually as groups and congregations as well as groups and congregations in communities to live together, work together, serve together, give together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer, prayer and, and grant us your peace. peace. We pray, Lord, for people who are actively keeping the peace locally, in the state, in the world. We pray for armed forces and their leadership. We pray for policemen, firemen, hospitals, nurses, doctors, aides. We pray for those who are still teaching school, for parents, for people who are still working, for those who are not working. In all these places, in all these relationships, Lord, we ask, we pray for peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer, prayer and, and grant us, us your peace. peace. Lord, we lift up those whose lives are in need of special measures of peace and comfort at this time. We pray for those who are sick at home, those who are sick and going to the hospital, those who are sick and in the hospital. We pray for those who are in the hospitalization. We pray we lift up baby Grace again. Lord, we lift up other individual members in our families, in our communities at this time. Lord, before you, these people we mentioned in our hearts and in our minds, that they're experience, we're praying for these people that they would experience your power, your presence, and have and receive your peace as they face challenges and struggles and unemployment and relocating or having to stay. We pray for the elderly, those who are at high at risk. As we face each of these days, Lord, we pray in mercy you would guide us and protect us and lead us. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer, prayer and, and grant, grant us your, your peace. peace. Into your hands, Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, trusting in your grace, in your power, in your peace, as you give it and bestow it in your time and in your ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer and, and grant, grant us your peace. We continue now with an exchange of peace. As we do so, we will practice it even though we are separated by time and distance and space. Maybe you can extend a fellowship hand out in front of you at this time and we will respond accordingly, pastor and people. Peace be with you. And God's, God's peace, peace to, to, you to you also. We pray the Lord's Prayer. Our, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. God, keep lifting up upon you and keep giving you peace within. Amen. 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 Our closing hymn is, I've got peace like a river and after the hymn uh, well, I can make the announcement now um, there's a few people who have called up and you can call up and I will be doing as best as I can safe practices to serve and distribute the Lord's Supper to you you can drive up under the entrance and you give me a call and I set a time I've had a couple people a couple couples have done so we're practicing safe social distancing as well and safe handling practice of the elements um, so yeah, just letting you know that you can still do that. And your time, not saying you have to, if you want to. Those of you who are hungering and thirsting, uh, we can attempt to do this this way at this time. Our closing hymn, I've Got Peace Like a River. <laughs> Like a river, I've got.